going on everyone welcome to episode 83 the first episode of 2022 here on the proven knowledge podcast this is the creator series today i welcomed a florida native he's actually from jamaica uh, moved here a few years ago when he was 17 he's now 24 years old his name is dre star uh, he has a good mix of R&B and hip-hop in his music. He talked about his many influences. Uh, Chris Brown and Michael Jackson, two of the biggest ones, uh, as well as Tory Lanez. And we talked about, um, from that, we kind of segue into the topic of being independent versus signing to a you know record deal, like a major deal and everything, and kind of the differences uh, in you know how people approach that, and more specifically how he would approach that moving forward. He's currently independent, uh, and he talked about, you know, having that creative freedom to kind of dictate, you know, where his career is going to land next and everything. Uh, he also talked about his upcoming ventures in doing clothing. He's got a clothing line in the works and he's also trying to get into acting, which I thought was really cool. Uh, he really eventually wants to be someone that has a real impact on culture. And I think it's really cool that he's aiming, you know, as high as he possibly can with this whole thing. Uh, you know, it starts with music, but you know, it goes to show that it can really lead to many other cool places as long as you're continuing to build and make connections. Um, so yeah, welcome to 2022, everyone, and I hope you enjoy this first episode we got for you. And without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, everyone, to episode 83 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today, I have a really cool R&B artist. Uh, he's a Jamaican native, moved to the United States. Um, his name is Dre Star. How are you, man? Hey, 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 thank you for having me. Yes, sir, and like I said, you know, thanks for reaching out and everything, and I'm glad to get you on the show, get to let, know a little bit more about you and everything, so to have, uh, or to start the episode off and everything, we kind of just have the guests give a little bit of background, you know, how you got into music, how long you've been doing it, uh, just basic information for those that might not know you and what you do. Oh, man, okay, so uh, where do I begin? Wow, music, uh, so I, uh, I actually started singing at the age of three believe it or not mm. um yeah man uh, my first song was at my uh, uh well in the bahamas we call it preschool i don't know what you guys call it in america but we call it preschool or kindergarten yeah uh, same graduation here yeah yeah graduation yeah. and that was um that was uh, my first uh song that i actually sung uh, in the front of an audience and after that uh, i i think i just you know, it came to me that I think I had, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, father and mother always pushed me to, you know, that I can achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. You know, they took me to shows, you know, uh, by the time I was 13, I was uh, assigned, um, and I was, uh, getting exposure to the music industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, man, um, I've been doing it for a while. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I've been doing it for a while. I've yeah. been doing it for a pretty, pretty long time. But uh, I'm kind of like a prodigy, old head, but not really such an old head because I have such a long way to go. Of course, you know, I want to do more in the yeah. industry, and uh, you know, so yeah, man. Exactly. Well, that's crazy to hear that you've been doing it for that long and everything. You're like three years old, like that's that's a <laughs> yeah. So, it's three, bro. did you ever experience like yeah. nerves that at that age, like being on stage? Like, were you ever nervous? Or you kind of just fell oh, right into hell it. Oh hell yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the butterflies, the butterflies were always there. But um, you know, you just kind of get over there. You you kind of get over it mm -hmm. uh, when you get on stage and you get the mic. You know, you talk about talent shows and stuff like that. I think um. Once you sing that first word or that first phrase, I, I think it, it just goes like that, and um, you're, you know, you just get more dominant, and, yeah. and, and you know, the music just takes over. So, yeah, I, I always get nerves, and you know, I think every artist will get that at some point because there's nothing like you know hearing the crowd and hearing the roaring, and mm -hmm. you know, that feeling never gets old. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, it's more of like a comfortability thing. Like over time, you kind of just get in the hang of it, and it becomes more like, uh, like second right. nature. Yeah, you cope with it. You learn how to deal with it, yeah. but it never really goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that never goes away. Yeah. So when you came to you know the United States, what age were you, and kind of how did that whole thing change uh, your journey, like for music? Right. Um. So came to the United States at the age of 17. 
and uh, I went to um, actually went to a college over uh, here in Tampa, Florida, and uh, found some really good friends. You know, and uh, it was actually more of a music school. It was actually a Christian school, actually. And um, I was roommate. I was roommates with uh, this guy who's a rapper. Um, I'm actually gonna take this uh, opportunity to, you know, get his name on there. But mm-hmm. his name is um, he calls himself Jazz now, but I, I know him as Zay. I call him Zay. He's my good friend. He's a really, really good rapper. I think he's trying to get out there. He's trying to make it in the rap industry. But you know, we just kind of like started dabbling with music, doing things here and there, and stuff like that. And um, you know, I just decided one day, man, you know what? This is what I want to do uh, full time. You know, I just wanted to do music. I always knew I wanted to do music. So uh, I got equipment, I got uh, speakers, mics, everything like that. And I just started recording, bro. I started recording and putting music on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And uh, at first, you know how it is in the beginning, being in a new place, no one really knows you like that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I was, it was hard in the beginning just to get people to believe in me, to understand that, you know, I am taking this serious, um, but over time, you know, I started getting more exposure, uh, I started getting more opportunities, um, uh, man, it, 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 it all really came together at the end of the day, but, you know. Yeah, that was my whole story of coming to the United yeah. States and getting into the music industry. Yeah, and you're what, like 23 now, so it's been like five or six years of that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm 24 now, so oh, my 24. birthday was October 4th. Yeah, 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 but that's good. That's nice. good. You, you've been doing your research. Yeah, I, I got to, man. I got to know I gotta know what's up. But that's cool. We're like the same age then. We're only a few months apart because I just turned 24 in uh, June. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, my happy, happy birthday, bro. Appreciate that. Man. Happy, happy belated to you as well. But that's thanks, thanks. Really good to hear, like how you how you did that though, and just like you also were able to find people that you know you shared a mutual uh-huh. interest with, and kind of just worked off one another's energy and everything, and just kind of started yes. networking and doing your thing. So uh, there you go. Awesome. So the last big thing you just dropped was the Prince tape, right in October, the project and everything. So. I'm kind of curious to know how that whole thing came about. Like, what was the concept for it? How was the process of making all the tracks and kind of sequencing everything and just doing, like, a full album? Mm, Good question. All right, so the the Prince tape, wow. Uh, I had recently released my first debut album, which was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, That album was released, like, in 2019, or 20 yeah i believe um mid 2019 and uh it was my first album didn't really know what i was doing to be honest just kind of experimenting in the lab you know in the studio cooking up music you know letting my friends listen to this listen to that Mm -hmm. and um you know it it was it was it, it didn't create a big mass uh you know it didn't create that buzz that i really wanted but i got the base of what it felt like to create an album and everything like that so with the prince tape which was released in uh 2020 um i kind of wanted to go beyond uh, above and beyond so i kind of went back to the drawing board and was looking you know what can i do what can I do better? You know, I wanted to make more, I wanted to showcase my talent, not just a, as a singer, but more as a rapper as well, because I, I actually do both. I'm mm-hmm. kind of more of like a singer rapper. You know, I kind of intertwine, uh, the both, both genres. Yeah. Um, and I use a lot of patois cause I'm Jamaican, of course. Uh, so I throw a lot of patois, uh, people are, are normally like to compare me to, uh, Tory Lanez, mm. you know, because of him. I, be- I believe he's Canadian, actually. Yeah, I, I don't even he's... think he's really Jamaican. Yeah, but they but... they always influence. They always get influenced a lot by like the drill and like the UK scene and definitely Jamaican scene as well. I know that so. e- exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that's just that was just kind of my style. So I kind of wanted to incorporate. You know, let me show the fans what I can really do. Mm-hmm. You know, not not only that I can sing, but I can also you know, I can jump on the ones and twos and, and rap a little yeah. bit as well. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, 
yeah, Prince Day was a success. Um, it's on all platforms. You know, I put it out. It's literally everywhere, mm. um, and it's created a great buzz. It did way, way better than my first album, yeah. which is what I wanted to accomplish. Yeah. So I was pretty happy about that. It's it's interesting because it's almost like the first album is always like your trial run. Like you're kind of getting the hang of things, and then by the second mm-hmm. one, you probably feel more comfortable with the process of it and just putting everything together. So it's almost like that progression like they hear like the fans will hear the progression so i think that's kind of what happened with you as well yep that's exactly what happened with me with with me man i always gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta do better than i did before you know what i'm saying i'm always trying to up myself taking that next (laughs) step makes sense yeah taking next step Mm -hmm. up as always and just continue to progress and everything is there definitely was there a song on Prince Tape that like stood out to you like maybe a favorite song of yours or maybe since then like one of the singles you've dropped is there a song that like the progress or the I guess the making of it was like really special to you? Man, man, these are good questions. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> you're it. making me really you're making me really think here. Yeah. Damn. Uh, <laughs> let me see on uh, Prince Day, which which song actually really stood out to me. I mean, bro, that's really hard because I actually really liked every last one of those songs. I mean, mm-hmm. I took my time with every last one of those songs. I mean, they were, I, and I mean, I didn't rush them either. Yeah. You know, normally I have the capability of just making the song in a day. Like, I can do that, but, mm-hmm. you know, with this album, I wanted to be special, so... You know, I would, you know, go back to, uh, I would, you know, come up with a line or come up with a hook and I would go back to it the next day and kind of like add piece by piece by piece. But um, I think, whew, like maybe one of my favorite songs on the album is uh, Miss Lady. Mm. I really like Miss Lady. Uh, I just feel like Miss Lady has so much potential. And uh, I feel like it just has an international sound, and a lot of people can, you know, relate to Miss Lady. I actually want to drop a music video to that song really, 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 really soon. Mm. Uh, but there's also like Swing My Way, uh, Euphoria, Showtime. Bro, they're all really good. So <laughs> that's such a hard question, bro. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. But it's good to hear that, like, you had the confidence in all the songs. You know what I mean? Like, that, I think that goes to show that you really put your heart and soul into the project, like, overall. Like, each one is kind of like your baby. You know what I mean? So it all collectively yeah. is, like, the same thing. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much. I know you're on Instagram and everything. I, I wasn't sure how often you're on, like, social media or how you approach social media as an artist. So I'm kind of curious. Uh, you know, things are ever evolving. Now we got like Facebook becoming meta and everything and social media is kind of moving in a different direction. So how do you approach it as an artist? Like, how are you using it to brand yourself and kind of put your music out there? Like, do you have any different approaches compared to other artists or you kind of just do your own thing? When it comes to social media? Yeah, just using social media to promote your music and your brand and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, you know, one of the good things about social media is You know, our generation, it makes it so easier for us to actually get more exposure. You know, back then when you would talk about, uh, let's throw like uh, the the greats like the Michael Jacksons and the, you know, the really the really big icons in the industry that really had to work their butt off to make it. They didn't have the Instagram and the Facebook and the, you know, I'm saying and the Twitter and the and the TikTok where you can post something and put a couple of tags on it and get hundreds of thousands of people to, you know, watch your stuff. Um, You know, it's, it's very, it's very uh, fortunate that our generation is able to do those things today where we have those tools that's accessible to us. And, you know, I don't take it for granted. You know, Mm -hmm. I definitely use, you know, my Instagram the most probably I use Instagram. I'm not really on Facebook like that. Mm. I'm uh, primarily on Instagram a lot. I've been trying out TikTok here and there, and uh, but it's really Instagram for me. I use Instagram a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot, you know? Yeah. So I use Instagram to get all my, uh, you know, everything that's going on with me, whether it be music or, you know, I'm releasing a Q&A or there's a movie I'm working on or whatever. Instagram is the place I'd like to go. Mm-hmm. But I feel like all artists should take advantage of social media because 
of course, is the new wave, you know, and there's other things that's coming on to stream. You know, I don't know if you heard about NFTs and oh, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, man, that's just the, there's a whole wave that's coming, bro. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. So as artists, uh, actors or whatever you are, whatever you are in the industry, it's your job to find these little loopholes and use them to the best of your ability to yeah. push your career forward. Yeah. So. And it'll be interesting because technology, you know, you go back like in time, it's always evolved, like since the beginning of, you know, human evolution and everything. So it's like technology has always been evolving and changing. And like now, like social media is no different. It's going to continue to change and evolve. There's going to be new platforms, uh, different platforms and everything that people are going to, you know, gravitate toward more. And so as artists, it'll be just, you know, adapting to the environment pretty much and just kind of changing your journey as you go. But I think the biggest thing is just using it for good, like because we see on social media, you know, there's a lot of like crazy stuff and a lot of distractions and things like that. But it's like I feel like for me, the way I approach is just like I'm going to use it for my music and what I care about and what I want to put out in the world. And that's about it. Like I'm just focused on that and just using it for that. I think people get caught up in a lot of the uh, the riffraff and everything and social media. It's like. As long as you can stay focused on, you know, what you're trying to do and the message you're trying to put out, uh, it's a great tool to kind of get yourself out there and, like, get in front of new audiences and everything. So I uh, definitely always mm-hmm. love hearing people's different perspectives on how they approach it. So definitely. Yeah, for sure, stuff. man. For um, sure. So obviously, you know, you have different music flavors. You incorporate a lot of different styles into your own music. As yes. far as, like, right now, who do you think you're listening to the most? Like, who are you maybe drawing some influence from or maybe just you enjoy what they've been putting out recently? Like, what artists? It could be your friends, could be bigger mm-hmm. artists. Like, who are you, uh, you know, listening to a lot lately in rotation? Uh, well, uh, when it comes to artists, who am I inspired by? I think that's what you're asking me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I listen to a lot of Chris Brown. <laughs> I listen to a whole lot. I mean, I'm I'm inspired a lot by you know just his you know his style, style and you know how he incorporates certain things in his music and just his uh, his overall sound. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I'm inspired by a lot of. I listen to a lot of Tory Lanes. Uh, man. Um, I mean, even the old old heads, you know, like the Micah Jacksons, mm-hmm. um, even some gospel artists, you know, Dietrich Haddon. You know, I try to get influence from every everyone I like and take what I, I can from them and mm-hmm. add me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So my style is a collective group of... Uh, a number of different artists but what i do is i just take a little bit of this from here a little bit of that from here and i turn it into dre star Mm. you know what i'm saying so you know that's how i look at it but to 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 answer that question you know i'm heavily influenced by i would say those two artists right there Mm. really big um and Tory Lane really stands out to me because of course he's independent right yeah um he's not with a major record label anymore he's doing everything independent and i just feel like you know his work ethic and his grind the way how he stays committed and he keeps going and he keeps you know releasing hits after hits after hits is like you you are you honestly you honestly can't not pay attention to him Mm -hmm. you know me as a fan me as a singer as an artist as an r&b artist you know you know, I have to pay attention to stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this new artist that's coming on stream. His name is uh, CK as well. That song, uh, mm, 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 mm. I don't know if you know that song on TikTok. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've heard it yet. I probably will, though, if it's that big. So Yeah, it's yeah. like really, really, really big, but it's called Love. I can't even pronounce the name, man, but it's called Love Noah TT or something like mm. that. Anyway, I dropped a remix to it on YouTube and. I was really inspired by the song, you know, so, yeah. you know, I went ahead and dropped a remix it. But those are the people who kind of inspire me to do what I do and, you know, to keep pushing. Mm. So you mentioned about Tory Lanez, like, being independent, and I definitely have seen that he's very consistent with, like, releasing music and everything, and I feel like 
that's honestly a really good route to go as an artist, especially nowadays where you can just kind of do your own thing. Like you still obviously need help here and there, but it's like, as far as like dictating the path of your career, it seems a lot more like hands on and like you can be involved. So for you, are you kind of maintaining that same way of being an artist? Like you like to have your hands in everything you do and you kind of like to lead your career where it's going to go. Or are you open yeah. to different possibilities, like, moving forward? Like, if a label approached you and wanted to do a partnership, like, would you ever do it? Or you're kind of just comfortable where you are now, you think? Uh, well, you're never really comfortable. You're never comfortable where you are. You always want to mm-hmm. elevate, right? Yeah. In the beginning of the interview, I talked about how I always want to grow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I feel like... It's good to get the experience. I mean, if a big major record label was to approach me, Sony, uh, Interscope, one of these big, you know, label companies mm-hmm. um, approach me, I mean, if, if the deal is right, if it sounds good, I would definitely oblige to them and come up with a deal and a plan or whatever. Mm-hmm. But to say, do I want to be, you know, signed to a major record label for the rest of my life? No. Mm-hmm. No, um, being independent is always the way that you should go um, as a goal, a long term goal. You don't want to be signed anyone. You want to have that freedom to do what you want to do, because mm-hmm. the thing is with uh, labels is what people don't understand is, uh, for example, OK, let's just say Sony comes to you right now and say, hey, man, uh, I want to give you this uh, uh, record deal for. $2 million, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to do your publishing. We're going to do your distribution. We're going to do all of that marketing, all of the good stuff for you. What a lot of artists will do is they will take the money, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And they will lavish it. They will spend it on, you know, they're going to buy their mom a house. They're going to buy their girlfriend a car. They're going to buy this. They're going to buy that. What they don't understand is how it works is you're going to have to pay that back. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pay that back, right? So a lot of the times they they will waste the money. They will waste what they were given. And then when it's, when it's time for payback, they're screwed mm-hmm. because they're stuck. You know what I'm saying? And they're, there's nothing you can do about it because now you owe these people. And now you're trapped to a label. You're trapped to the system yep. because you're going to have to pay back every bit of that $2 million back to them before you can even make money again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so if, if you look at it like that and you have a game plan, then you're able to you're able to weather the storm and finesse the label, if that makes sense, yeah, exactly. um, to, to, to your benefit. Um, and once you have those things in place, then, yeah, I would definitely say, you know, go and get signed to a record label. I'll definitely get signed to a record label if it makes sense. Yeah. I'll do it. And... Um, but I definitely want to be independent, you know, yeah. long term. That's like the biggest thing, too, is like having a plan. Because think about how many artists, especially if they're new and they don't have that knowledge of knowing like how it works. Think about how many mm-hmm. people would just be like if a contract was shoved in their face, they'd sign it and wouldn't even bother getting a lawyer or wouldn't even bother like looking it over. Like how scary mm-hmm. is that to think that that's like we still live in that reality? You know what I mean? And I see like artists all the time that if they're just starting out or they're only a couple years in and they haven't really studied business, like as far as like how it works, they Mm -hmm. would do just that. They would go and be locked into something terrible. And if they, like you did, like you said, if they didn't have that financial literacy and they didn't know how to be frivolous about like their money and everything and take care of it, they would be, they'd be screwed. Like there's no way around it. So it's like, you really have to take your time with it. And I feel like being Mm -hmm. an independent artist, it definitely, it builds that accountability, you know what I mean? Because it's, yes, on, it's on your plate to get all of the stuff uh, in order and really figure out what kind of path you want to take to be successful. And it makes you take your time, like a long time to get it done and see results. But it pays mm-hmm. off way more, I feel like, when you do that. Uh, that's how I've always viewed it is like when I, when I you know, set out to do a goal and it takes me, you know, a year or two years, but by the time it's all done, I'm like, wow, that journey was crazy. Like, I really wow. enjoyed that whole thing. Uh, right. And then I start a new journey, and I set the bar even higher. So it's like, yes. as an independent artist, you get to experience that firsthand. And I think that's what a lot of people overlook. Uh, and they kind of yes. just want to rush things. And it's like, we're not really in the business of rushing things. I think we're in the business of 
you know, the long term uh, to see success for as long as possible. Um, right. So I, I love everything you were just saying about uh, that whole, uh, like the industry and everything and how you would approach it. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you have you have to have a you have to have a game plan, you know, going in. You got to have a game plan. That's number 1, you know. And um, you know, I mean everyone's case is different, you know. Sometimes I mean people are just you know, some people are, you know, you know, not doing so good, you know, they're, you know, in a really enough uh, rough neighborhood and, you know, they're just dying to get out, you know, they're really trying to get out. Uh, the streets, you know, get out of, you know, selling drugs or doing whatever it is that they're doing. And like I said, you know, that big label drops, you know, a million on them. Mm -hmm. You know, who's not going to take it? Some people would even go and get a lawyer. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, right, you about to give me a million dollars? Hell yeah, Yeah. sign me up. Where do I sign my name? (laughs) And then they're like, oh, man, so this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, sometimes you really can't blame them, but I, I would say, you know, before before you get into something as big like that, you know, definitely, you definitely want to get in touch with your attorney. Mm-hmm. You definitely want to read the contract. You want to do all of that stuff. Do your research because this is a business, you know, this is called a music industry. Mm-hmm. Everyone is looking for a way out, how they can make more money. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They're not really worried about you if they're not honest they're really trying to use you if anything so it's your responsibility to make sure that they don't use you and you get everything that you can get out of that contract Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um but yeah man yeah 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 yeah. that's good stuff yeah i think the best thing that we can hope for which i think we are kind of moving in the right direction i think it's just like hopefully one day we see a lot less of that and a lot more of just everyone kind of gets to do their own thing and have that freedom have that creative freedom and be able to make money to survive and thrive and everything so right uh, definitely kind of just pushing the old model out hopefully eventually but uh definitely definitely intriguing topic for sure um for sure so not sure if you've ever thought about this question, uh, but it's a question I've been asking for the last few months now, and it is, what do you think your lasting impact is on your fans? Like when someone hears a song of yours or an album of yours, what do you want to be something that they take away and kind of just the overall message at the end of the day? Mm. Transparency. Mm-hmm. I want to be re- I want to be real, bro. Yeah. I want to be as transparent as I can be. You know, as artists... Uh, a lot of times we put our feelings, we put our lifestyle, we put our what we go through in our music, mm-hmm. you know? Our music is an extension of how we really feel, and so I use that as an outlet to, you know, be real with my fans and be transparent with my fans. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to keep it clean to the best that I, I, can, I possibly can because I am from a Christian background, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mom, dad, we're both christians you know we believe in jesus christ Mm. and you know i I try my best to 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 keep it edifying to keep it positive of course you know i'm an r&b singer so a lot of time i talk about girls i talk about this i talk Mm. about whatever but it just it's really a facade as an r&b artist it's a brand Mm. my message is to be uh what i want my fans to get from me is that transparency that i'm trying to relate in the music Mm -hmm. you know of you know just believing in yourself you know whatever you want to achieve you can achieve you know apart from you know the r&b songs there's a whole lot of positive songs that i also that i also put out as well and uh even on the print state so Mm -hmm. you know i just want people to, to 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 stay positive and to be real with yourself and to look at someone like me who literally came from the bottom. Like, I really had no help at all. Like, no help at all. And I was able to make something out of literally nothing. Like, nothing. So, you know, all my fans, all my fans who sing, who are aspiring artists, I want them to, you know, be like, man, look at what Drake Star is doing. I think I can do that too. Mm-hmm. If he's doing it, I'm pretty sure I can do it. So that's the impact I want to have on my fans. Yeah. Really serve as like an inspiration to the next generation. That's always the goal, I think, too. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. That's great stuff, yep. man. Yep. So yeah, man. you mentioned before we started recording, you were, you know, planning for 2022 and everything. So I'm curious, you know, what is next for you? It could be music. It could be shows. Like, what's the next move uh, for Dre Star? Man, I want to – I don't know why, but I want to I wanna get in movies so bad. <laughs> are we thinking acting like, or directing, I, or what are we thinking? I want to I want to do a lot of acting, man. I want to I want to get into because I mean I am an artist, mm-hmm. but you know I'm always trying to broaden the scope, man. I'm always trying to do something different, and so you know I've had a taste of what it feels like to be behind the camera, like an actual movie, mm-hmm. because I, I've been a part of a documentary before. Um, and bro, I really like, I love the feel. I love the feeling of being behind the camera and actually acting, you know what I'm saying? So I think in 2022, I'm definitely going to be a part of some, I'm, I'm going to be a part of some movie. Uh, I'm going to be hitting up Netflix. I'm going to be hitting up Hulu. I'm going to be hitting up all of these guys because, you know, that is something I want to do. Uh, fashion is also something that I want to get into as well. Um, so I think those two things are something that I'm, I'm going to be tapping into uh, 2022. I'm going to uh, invest in venture. And so, yeah, I'm gonna wish me best of luck. Yeah. Wish me best of luck on that. And yeah. hopefully I will be on the silver screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of these days you got to like star in a movie and then like curate the soundtrack for it. That would be cool. Oh, man, bruh. I'm telling you, even that, I mean, I've already, I've already started uh, to submit, um, you know, my music to some of these guys and stuff like that. So who knows, man, anything is possible. I feel like whatever is for you will always be for you and nothing will ever come in the way of that. If it's for you to, you know, you know, have your music in big movies on Netflix and acting and all of that stuff is, is going to come naturally mm-hmm. with hard work and dedication. Anything else is possible. Yeah. So I live by that every single day. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Exactly. So mm-hmm. we're down to the last few questions here, man. These are questions I asked every, or yeah, that I ask every episode. Um, so if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe give yourself a piece of advice or maybe not change anything at all. What do you think you would do? <sighs> Ooh, man, I've never, ooh, these are some good, (laughs) these are some really good questions, so, ah, nothing, man, nothing at all, I love the journey, Mm -hmm. I love the process, Uh, I think everything I went through was for a reason, and, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that God is not going to put you through anything that you can't handle up there, and so, with me, um, I, I just love the journey. I'm in love with the journey, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you it's smooth sailing. Sometimes you bump your head and you learn from it, you know. But I feel like there is no failure with me. I feel like there's only lessons that are learned with me. Mm-hmm. And so, because I look at it from that aspect, uh, nah, there's nothing that I would change. Um, no, there's nothing that I would change at all. Mm-hmm. Because it, it made me who I am today. Yeah. Because of everything that happened. Is why I'm on this, you know, interview with you right now. Mm-hmm. So if we flip it, then ten years from now, where do you think you want to be? Like, where do you envision yourself in your life and your career? Ten years from now to this day? It could be to this day, to this year, either one. Okay. Uh, ten. So ten years from now, um, where do I see myself being? Uh, I see myself being a hundred times better than i am today i see myself um involved with a whole lot of things even besides music um i see myself you know 10 years from now i see myself man i see myself just just killing it just killing it in the industry whether it be music whether it be uh the film industry whether it be fashion whatever it might be i see myself just making an impact and becoming an icon you know what I'm saying? Someone that people can actually look up to and be inspired by, mm-hmm. you know, Dre Star, you know, yeah. coming up with my own clothing line. That's something else that I, I, I've actually been dealing with as well. I That's actually in the works, by the way. Uh, I won't really say too much about it yet because I haven't really publicized this yet, but I'm definitely working on 
you know, my own clothing line as well. So, nice. yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Ten years from now, all those things should be uh, to pass. For they should sure. have came through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any final words of wisdom today for the listeners? Ah, stay motivated. Uh, don't ever give up. Don't ever. The last thing you want to ever do to yourself is give up. I feel like. You know, if, if, if you're determined to accomplish something, the only person, the only thing that can stop you is you. I feel like we are our biggest enemy, mm-hmm. you know. And so if you look at it like that, you know, you're destined for greatness. Don't ever give up. Always know that, you know, you put God first. Ever, anything will, ever, will always be possible. And, you know, just strive to be better than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm. If you can do that you're going to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. Well, Dre, that's all I have for you today, man. Thank you once again for joining me. I really appreciate it. I was glad to get to know more about you and everything. And I'm wishing you luck on the music, the clothing, and the acting, all you got going, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do, bro. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. That was episode 83. As always, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you'd like to send any funds. Feel free to leave us that five-star rating if you enjoyed today's episode. So we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.